What's going on, guys? My name is Trey. Welcome to What Got to Change. Today, we're going to be talking about cheating from a woman's perspective. And I'm trying not to laugh because I read this article and it is just hilarious to me. Uh, by the way, if you want to like subscribe after watching this video, please do. Y'all see the donation over there. So we're working our way to the PC soundboard. Much love to you. Much love. We're, we're hopefully, hopefully, we're getting closer and closer to getting that, man. I'm excited. Ah. Uh, Turn up the cheat. All women should have an affair once in their life. It made me feel sexier and younger. I laugh at this, and it is a serious thing, because women do try to make themselves feel sexier and younger, but it's just hilarious to me is that the way this article ends is just gonna, it's just gonna be like, wow. So let's start, man. Every woman should try this at least once in their lives. More than a quarter of women who cheat feel more attractive. 22% feel younger, according to studies by Affairs website. And here's their citation. Uh, so first of all, cheating to make you feel younger, what, what good does that do? To make you feel, but you're not. You know what? That's so goofy that, and that's what they, that's how they get women these days is make it. It's all about feeling younger. It's all about the makeup. It's all about looking and feeling younger. You understand that men, and once again, guys, sex, wait to marriage. I'm cool with that. That's what I suggest. But men who have sex, they don't have sex with anything and everything. It's crazy that y'all feel younger just because a man would have sex with you. You know why he has sex with you? Because you said yes. <laughs> that's, that's as simple as it gets, baby. They're just looking for somebody to say yes. It's all it's going to take, right? So if you want to feel younger, fine. But for the guy on his side, he may even regret having sex with you because you're younger. But he's like, I had to get it how I had to get it. <clears throat> let's, 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 let's move down. <clears throat> I was steady, but mundane relationships with James when my head... This is, I don't think this is the real name of the people. <clears throat> I was steady, but mundane relationships with James when my head was turned uh, four years ago by a married man at work. It was not as though I was looking to cheat, but after years with James, the initial spark fizzled out. In the early days, he lavished me with meals and fancy restaurants, brought me flowers, and made me feel like the center of his universe. I had never met a man like him who was completely obsessed <clears throat> with my happiness. I'm assuming she's talking about James out there. Without warning, though, cracks be yeah, she is, began to show. I cannot put my finger on exactly when or why it happened, but the fun nights became boring and I felt invisible. When James did not have his head buried in his phone, he was on the game console. All right, so some of this I can agree with. Not the cheating. Duh. But, man, it is hard. It is hard, okay? Something I think women got to understand is that when men fall into place, when they get to where they're married for a few years, it's not easy to always want to go out to fancy restaurants. You got to think about finances. It's not always to keep up that spark. It's hard to keep that going because life does become mundane. And men do start to think, man, I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm working enough to make sure that the bills are paid. It's not that men want to not have the spark. It's just when men settle in, this is what they're looking for. And it's a struggle and we kind of have to find a balance. But men, once they get to that point in their life where they're like, all right, I'm good. I got a wife. I got a family. I'm just going to come home, do my thing. I got to get ready for work tomorrow. They just fall into habit. You know, you meet some men who are so disciplined every day. Same thing. Doesn't matter. Uh, they're going to come home, do this, do this, do this, wake up, come home, do this, do this, do this. Come. You know, it's just the same. They get into a routine and they don't want to do all the sparks and stuff like that. They just want to come home and be and have peace for just a moment. Because they know they got to go right back to work, right back to stressing out, right back to thinking about paychecks, right to thinking about bills again. Um, but, men, what you do have to do is, and this is hard even for me because you, I'm a guy who does that same thing, man. I, I, I wake up, I, I work, I get ready for this live stream. Uh, after I get off this live stream, I get right back to I got to work out and then I get right back to research and stuff and all these kind of things. It's hard to just want to go hang out, to want to go do stuff. Because... Even myself, when I go out, like say if I went to another city to go ha do something with my wife, in my head, I'm already thinking, all right, this is going to be four or five hours I got to take away from this that I would normally be doing this, or I'd be listening to this podcast, or I'd be learning about this. It's just hard because it's like, it feels like you're wasting your time sometimes. Like, yeah, I go out to a fancy restaurant, but what about, what are we going to talk about? You know, it's just like, oh, how's life? Oh, the same thing as it was yesterday. It just feels like a waste of time. And I know that's bad to think, but that's just how some men think. 
So you do have to kind of keep up the spark and do the best you can. Listen to your wife. Obviously, her going out to feel younger is goofy. And I do think we have to understand when it comes to marriage, it's not always about feeling the spark. There may be a couple years where there's nothing really going on. You're just living, especially if you got kids. So it's just like, don't don't put it on the man to be like, oh, if there's no spark, I got to go out and get it from somebody else. If you find another man flirting with you and they know you're married, just know that that man is disgusting. You know, just know that he obviously don't care about you or anything else. He's just trying to get to whatever he's got to get to. Because the man who's talking to a married woman is a man that I cannot respect. Right. And the fact, the fact that he's doing this behind the husband's back shows me that he's a coward. This is not the kind of man you want to be with. It's just goofy. Let's read a little bit more. <clears throat> I tried to sex spice up our sex life with sexy underwear and killer heels. He spurned my advances. Sometimes I caught him looking at other women on the street. So when this Andrew, who's the guy from work, began flirting with me on a work night out, I felt flattered. He was 10 years younger than me, and it estranged. And he was estranged from his wife. He's a married man, too? Come on, baby girl. Come on. As we laid together afterwards, planning our next secret rendezvous, I felt alive for the first time in years. Sounds like Jada Pika Smith. Does it not? It does to me. After a few drinks, we ended up back at his place having an incredible... Wait a minute. So when he began flirting me on a night, on a work night out, this was just one night? After a few drinks, we ended up back at his incredible, having incredible sex, which lasted long... Okay, this is... <laughs> This is what I was saying when I was reading this. It's almost like a joke. It's like reading this from a little girl. After a few drinks, we ended up back at his place having incredible passionate sex, which lasted longer than Jane's 10 minutes. So you're just going to disrespect the man? This is like, it's, it's hard to even read this because it's like, this woman is so disrespectful looking like this. In fact, I don't even care if she looked like a 10. It's like, what are you doing? Like, somebody who feels like they have to talk behind somebody's back like that, to me, is just a disgusting individual. Because if you didn't want to be with James anymore, okay, fine, whatever. You cheated, still makes you a bad person, but you move on in life, that's fine. But when you find somebody saying stuff like, it lasted much longer than my ex, it's just like, well, not ex at the time, but much longer than my husband. It's like, you're just a vindictive person. You don't deserve to be in a relationship. You, sh you clearly have no respect for James. Um, just get on with your life. I have never experienced a rush like it as we laid together. Planning our next rendezvous, I felt alive. for going back to James afterwards, the night he's been having spontaneous, mind blowing sex with Andrew, that's all I could think about. Yeah, that's, that's just how sin works. That's how when you get into those dark ways, that's how it works. It's like the first time looking at porn. It feels great at first, but then you feel goofy afterwards. Okay? Having cheating on your partner afterwards, yeah, it feels great because you're doing something bad, demon time. But... That's what it's supposed to feel like. That's what, that's what, <laughs> that's the world they want y'all to live in. This disgusting world of just staying in the dark. All right, let's get to young and sexy. <clears throat> Listen to this. Well, why don't y'all see this part? Sex with Andrew was fun and spontaneous. I could not get enough, whether it was in a hotel or the backseat of his car, like a young teenage boy. <laughs> You guys, man, you guys who are always trying to have that fun, spontaneous sex in the back of a car. I know that movies make it seem like that's great stuff. But if you and this is for my married people here, but if you have intimacy with your wife or husband, you know, it is not as simple as just getting in the back of a car. Because when you're doing something with a married one, yeah, can it be fun and spontaneous sometimes? Yes. But for the most part, most of the time, the end goal is the end goal, you know, <laughs> It, we're doing our biological things for me personally. And it's how, you know, I believe uh, my face, uh, you're doing it obviously to reproduce, but there's also some intimacy to it, you know? Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it is what it is. Cause everybody knows, even if you want to be spontaneous afterwards, dude, it's not, it doesn't feel that spontaneous afterwards when you have to do the cleanup and mop up, it, it don't, it don't, you know, it don't hit the same every time. Maybe that first few times. Yeah. After a while, though, man, it's like eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You don't always have to make it hot and sexy and sweaty. It doesn't always have to be that. Um, that's why I don't, I would never personally do it in the back of a car, but that's just me. <clears throat> Andrew made me feel young, sexy again. Unlike James, he complimented me constantly at a time when I needed it most. Why are you looking for that? Huh? You, it's like people expect marriage to be this exhilarating thing at all times 
the reason, I mean, sometimes men don't compliment their wives a ton because they don't want to, they also don't want to lose the spark. Like, calling your wife beautiful and all that every single day, it gets to the point to where when she does hear it, it just rolls right off the back of her skin, you know? I don't know, that's just me, though. Like many uh, women as they get older, I have become, there it is, I have become insecure about my body and needed a boost. So your insecurity is what you led you to it and you're blaming it all on him because you're insecure? Well, then go to the gym. I'm not knocking you, but look, I mean, go to the gym. Go or go work out in your basement. Whatever you got to do, do some push-ups. But if you're putting on weight like this, which we saw she put on weight based off the earlier pictures, this is her before. So if you're putting on weight, don't put the insecurity on him. Don't make it to be where he has to be the one who pushes you up. Why can't you get yourself in better shape? I'm just being honest. I don't know what he looks like, but I would say the same thing to him. I say the same thing to myself. When I feel insecure, guys, and I definitely feel insecure about my weight. You know what I do right now? I work out. I eat healthier. It feels good to dress nice because I couldn't do this before I was too heavy. You know what I mean? And when you become more secure in yourself, it makes the relationship better. But if I put it all on my wife to make me feel sexy, if I put it all on my wife to make me feel better about myself, it ain't going to work. I bought uh, Lacey lingerie from Ann Summers. Being careful to the... Being careful to the... Sh what? Oh, okay. I get it. Being careful to show the receipts. And we had type of wild... Okay, this is just this is just stupid. All she keeps talking about is the sex. Can we get on to something else? Okay, here we go. And it's... Oh, 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 perfect. Oh, never mind. I didn't need to read this. Going beyond the missionary position and getting out of my sex comfort zone was invigorating. I lost all my inhibitions. So this is like a porn relationship. That's what I just heard. Uh, women never say infidelity because if you are being taken for granted and your fellow will not listen, then it's fair game, stupid. And this time, in time, Andrew patched up things with his wife and called it time on our affair. It lasted three incredible... Look at you. You sound like a pick-me. Three incredible months and he patched it up with his wife who probably looked better than you, did better than you, and is better than... I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go that far. I'm just making jokes. But I miss the rush of the endor. Ooh, I like you said that. I miss the rush of endorphins. Yep, that sounds like a drug. And by this time, obviously, you can get endorphins from working out and stuff. I'm just saying. And by this time, my relationship with James was sexless and dead. I mean, are you doing anything? Hey, look, you're just getting bigger. About every picture I go down. Three months on, and after two years together. After two years together, James ended things too. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I read this correctly? I thought y'all had been together for years. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Y'all only together for two years? So y'all got together when you were 36? No, that can't be because look at her. In this picture, she's clearly younger. Fun nights out were rare for Rachel and her ex. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. I'm assuming they were together for years, but let's just let's just let's just keep it moving. I guess I keep saying two years later. He had no idea about my affair, or if in a he did not show his suspicions, but maybe his kicks were elsewhere too. I did not fall apart when our relationship ended because my affair Andrew had shown me that I deserved better. Goofy. Although I've been on day since, I'm 46 now and still searching for the one, which has been tough during the pandemic in a small town. Like, first of all, she was 38 when the affair started because she said that. She said I was 38 and I felt my thing slipping. She said that earlier. I was 38 and I could feel my youth slipping. So two years later, she broke up with James. So it's been six years since that day. And she said the pandemic. So this is 2021 is when this article came out. That will make her probably 48 now. So at 48, eight years after you had the 10 years. Yeah, yeah, because the relationship ended. So since the affair happened at 38, it's 10 years, you're still by yourself alone looking like this. Was it worth it? No. Let me tell you all something. These people who go out here and have affairs and think that life is better on the other side because they get treated better. I'm going to be honest with you. Even if you're in a marriage, I'm sure you can always find somebody who treats you better because we can all define what better is. 
better can be like, oh, he he lasts longer in the bed, or oh man, he doesn't play video games as much, or he he lo- he mows the lawn faster. Everybody's better is different. And for a guy, their better would be like, man, she don't talk as much. I'm just being honest. She don't talk as much. She don't nag me as much. She she has sex whenever I feel like it. On both sides, it's just goofy. Okay. But I think what's happened today, and I, being honest with you, I'm not trying to make this a man versus woman thing. It's just my honest opinion. I see women going out and doing this stuff. Even though statistically men and women cheat at the same rate pretty much. Um, what I see more and more is that men don't tend to go out of their way. When they cheat, they don't tend to go out of their way to be like, oh, man, I cheated and I felt so exhilarated. It felt so much better. Man, I just, it was crazy. She's so but. Men just, they do it and they just go on about their day. You know, they do it because after that clarity, you know what I'm talking about? They go on about their day and they go back home. They can kiss their wife and do everything. Does that mean it's right? No, it's still disgusting. But women, when they do it, they decide to write an article about it. They'll go get on Facebook. They'll go get on YouTube just to embarrass themselves. Just to embarrass the husband. Be like, yeah, I had sex with him and he was just bigger. He was just his, he, he could stroke it longer. Women think that talking like a teenage girl is so much better. I, I, I find it goofy, like when you hear uh, the Meg the Stallions, the Cardi B's, even though those people are in relationships, when they talk about making fun of a man, they'll be like, oh, he had a bigger dick. Oh, he had the big dick energy. Oh, yeah, he flipped me upside down on the ceiling. We went at it like vampires, and then he turned into a bat. It's just like, this is just the goofiest stuff. It's like listening to kids, man. And it's just like, okay, I mean, if that's that's what you think. But when women really go out, especially this woman's 38 years old, right? At the time of, at the time of writing this, they were 46. Um, so it's like a 46-year-old, you're talking like a little schoolgirl. Do women take no pride in growing up? I just don't understand that. I feel like even men, they start to feel ashamed after a while. When I meet men in their 40s talking about life, they're just like, man, damn. I, you know, I'm in my 40s now. I got kids to take care of. I'm just trying to make it, man. I go work. To, I got to go work 12 hour shifts, especially if they know they didn't do anything with their life. They regret it. They don't. They don't. But when women do stuff like this and they do stuff on the side, it's like at 46, they still talk like they're in their 20s. They just can't get away from it. Even if they're 46, happily married with kids. It's just some of these women are just like, oh, man, girl. Oh, man. I, I was with my friends and we were just twerking and shaking our booty and getting drunk and drinking wine and just like, excuse my language, but please, for the sake of God, and I mean this with the most sincere heart of my life, grow the fuck up. Grow up. You're 46 years old talking like a little girl. You're supposed to be teaching young women about life and how to not make the same financial mistakes or learn how to get a home, learn how to take care of the kids, learn about the insecurities that do come with getting older. That's the stuff we're talking about. But too many of these women want to get on OnlyFans. They still want to get in thongs, shake their butt, make TikToks. It's just like, man, the women are just, what the F are we doing? What the F is going on, bro? And for the men who still are in their 40s, and still getting drunk every night, still trying to party, still trying to act like they're hood, still talking about having ops, still talking about banging, talk about gang banging. And even for the guys who are cowboys, right, like the country boys, even them still talking about getting in fights and knocking out people and doing all this goofy stuff. It's like, man, grow up, man. At some point, can you just shut up and grow up? Nobody wants to hear about what you did in high school. Nobody wants to hear about what you did in your 20s. If you're a failure, okay, fine. But keep moving forward. Nobody needs to... You, why do we want to live the rest of our days in our youth? Are there some days I want to be 20 again? Yes, but not to go back to be 20 to go get drunk again. Not to go back and uh, have all the, the women on me. Even, even if I could go back and be in shape and girls would be more attractive to me, I would not go back to my 20s to do that. I was to go back to my 20s to do that. It would just be to build a better future to when I turn 30. That's the only thing that makes any difference to me. But for me personally, I look. Now, the thing that sucks is when you start getting into your 30s and you get out of your 20s, your mortality starts to set in. You start realizing I could be dead at 60. I could be dead at 30. I could be dead next year. All that stuff to set in because we all start losing people around us. Tragedies happen. We see people die. So your mortality starts to set in. For me as a man, 
because of that mortality, I don't think about oh being young again. I think about, man, what can I do to improve my life today so that if I make it to 40, I can be financially stable. My kids can be able to go to school and my, my wife will be good and we can be living a better life and I can be living my life for God. How can I do more of that kind of stuff? How can I help people more? That's what I think about. I do not sit around thinking about getting drunk. I do not think about sitting around smoking weed and playing my video games all day and eating Cheeto Puffs. Right? I don't think about fucking. I don't think about dicking some girl down. That, that stuff is old to me. And that's why I think it's so funny when it comes to these affairs and cheating. It's like, is that all you're thinking about is sex all day, every day? I mean, damn, move on. I mean, grow up. You're still talking about having sex in the back of a damn seat? How about you learn to pay off your credit cards? How about you get your credit out? How about you go out there and do something for somebody? Go and help somebody who needs you because you have the experience of failure. Go help another young man. Go do something. But if you're still thinking about dicking a girl down, I mean, my God. Guys, it, to me, honestly, it, it, it starts with changing your music, Right. I've done the same thing. It's not been too long since I stopped listening to music. I don't listen to music anymore. I only listen to podcasts. I only listen to YouTube videos or I listen to some kind of book. I stopped listening to music because it starts to get to me. Even at my age, hearing, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I can't even think of a song at this moment, but oh yeah, I'm having sex with this chick and I'm having sex with that chick and I'm trying to nut and go down her throat and just all this stuff that I find revolting today. It's just crazy to me that we can't get past that. And then girls talking about having a guy touch her kidneys or get in her guts. It's just like, I'm just over it, man. I'm, I'm a grown man. I don't even laugh at that stuff. Like when people say like, man, he came hard down the pipe. Pause. It's like, go the fuck up, man. And damn, I mean, can we have a conversation? And that's why I don't talk to men like that. I'll talk to men where we, if I hear a man say pause, I'm probably not even going to have a conversation with them. It's just like, man, I'm not trying to do all this all day. I don't, I don't think like that. I talk to businessmen. I talk to men who are trying to do something for the family. And I, that's the people I try to stick around and listen to. Now, sometimes I listen to stuff that's goofy, but I'm really trying to change my life. You know, um, I've been doing this since I was 26. I told you guys when I turned 26 that you guys would slowly see my life changing. You've seen it. Sometimes for the better, sometimes I've had some failures that I've recorded. It's life. But these affairs, these getting, having sex, and I'm just over it, man. Please grow up. I'm gone.